Hey there, time travelers. Welcome back to our journey through the halls of education. Today, we're taking a groovy trip back to explore items that were once commonplace in schools, but have since disappeared into the mists of time. From card catalog to manual typewriters, get ready for a blast from the past. Rolodex. In a time before smartphones, computers, and tablets, the business world was filled with address books, business cards, holders, and Rolodexes. Without the modern technology available to remember hundreds of phone numbers and addresses through a simple touchscreen, the people of the day needed an organized way to search through their contacts. Therefore, in 1956, the Danish engineer Hildor Nielsen invented the Rolodex, being employed by Zephyr American, a large stationary manufacturer in New York. This device held hundreds of specially shaped index cards on which contact information was written. These cards were organized around a center wheel that allowed for the user to quickly sort through the cards and find the correct contact. Typically, these cards were organized by the last name of the contact, so all the school personnel and school students were there. This invention was a huge success during the mid-20th century. Although some organizations would copy information from business cards onto the Rolodex cards, other companies began producing business cards in the shape of the Rolodex cards. This allowed for a much easier filing and organizational process for those wishing to save their information. Today, although it is not often expressed, the term Rolodex can be used to describe any type of personal organizer or business card collection. Manual Typewriter In the 70s, every school had a typing class where students learned to master the art of touch typing on these mechanical marvels. It was about mastering the QWERTY keyboard layout, building speed and accuracy, and preparing for a future filled with paperwork and correspondence. In those typing classes, students were taught the importance of proper posture and hand placement, with teachers emphasizing the need for precision and efficiency. The rhythmic clacking of the typewriter keys became a familiar sound, signaling the march of progress as students honed their skills and prepared to enter the workforce. And while the process may have been slow and methodical, there was a sense of pride that came with mastering the typewriter, knowing that each page typed was a testament to their hard work and dedication. But the typewriter wasn't just a tool for learning, it was a symbol of professionalism and authority. In offices around the world, typewriters were the backbone of administrative work, with secretaries and clerks typing up memos, letters, and reports with speed and accuracy. The clickety-clack of the typewriter keys became synonymous with productivity, signaling to the world that work was being done behind closed doors. Its mechanical simplicity and tactile feedback offer a sense of nostalgia for a time when life moved at a slower pace. Filmstrip Projector Filmstrips were used to show educational films in classrooms, serving as a predecessor of video cassettes, DVDs, and Blu-ray technology. Filmstrip projectors allowed teachers to pause presentations for class discussions by turning a knob, and the projectors were widely used in classrooms until VCR replaced them in the 80s. The use of film strips as an educational and promotional ID was taken up in about the 30s. Car manufacturers used them to show dealers the latest models. During World War II, U.S. military authorities taught millions of soldiers how to aim a rifle and avoid contracting diseases like syphilis. They also showed women how to become factory workers and to hold riveting guns. By the late 40s, film strips were being produced by units within the Departments of Education in various American states. It was claimed in 1954 that USA was probably the world's largest producer of strip films, specifically for classrooms made by teacher producers. The film strips were an educational revolution in America akin to smart boards today. They were stored in neat little canisters which could be easily dispatched to schools. Accompanying them was a script read by the teacher describing the 25 or so images depicted in the films, which were manually advanced in the projector. Handheld Calculator In the course of the 70s, handheld electronic calculators transformed the way tens of millions of people did arithmetic. Engineers abandoned slide rules, business people gave up desktop calculating machines, and shoppers replaced simple adding machines and adders. Educators asked how much students should even learn written procedures for multiplication, division, and taking square roots. Parents bought new toys that offered both instruction in arithmetic and other games for their children. A few calculators were programmable, offering an alternative to large computers and to the microcomputers introduced in the same decade. Like microcomputers, they incorporated changes in microprocessor technology and displays. Many companies that sold calculators, such as Hewlett-Packard, Texas Instruments, 
Tandy Corporation, and Commodore would also market microcomputers and digital watches, other novelties of interest at the time. Handheld calculators were introduced into the United States in 1970 and 1971 by the Japanese firms of Buzicom and Sharp, as well as the American firm of Bomar. It could not only add, subtract, multiply, and divide, but compute trigonometric functions, logarithms, and exponents. In other words, it did the work of a slide rule and more. The calculator sold for $395. Not to be outdone, Texas Instruments introduced its first calculator, the Datamath, later that year. The device performed the calculations possible on a slide rule for a somewhat more reasonable price of $150. Metal Lunchbox. The history of the modern-day lunchbox began in 1935 when a company licensed the likeness of the then-new cartoon character Mickey Mouse, which it used on its oval-shaped lunch kit. This metal container was sealed at the top with a wire latch on each side, doubling as the handle when closed. It had a tray inside but no bottle or thermos. Those would come much later. Mickey Mouse lunch kits initially sold for 15 or 20 cents, but today they can fetch anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars depending on condition. From 1935 through the 80s, placing any popular character on the side of a lunchbox made it a must-have for children who carried them to school. The first lunchbox that was based on a children's TV show was in the 1950 Aladdin model that featured a Hopalong Cassidy decal placed on a red or blue metal box. As television began to catch on, TV characters and movie stars became the perfect subject for lunchboxes and matching thermos, since they were aimed at children. Aladdin continued to make various Hopalong Cassidy lunchboxes throughout the 50s, while American Thermos made nine styles of Roy Rogers lunchboxes between 1953 and 1957. Although the majority of vintage lunchboxes are metal, many companies turned to make vinyl lunchboxes. These are essentially cardboard wrapped and sealed in shower curtain material. Fountain pen. In the 70s, every student's desk was adorned with a fountain pen, a symbol of sophistication and elegance. These pens were more than just writing tools. They were statements of style and craftsmanship. Unlike the disposable pens we use today, fountain pens had a special ink cartridge nestled within them, eliminating the need for messy inkwells like their quill pen predecessors. But what truly set fountain pens apart was the experience of writing with them. As you gleated the nib across the paper, the ink flowed effortlessly, leaving behind a trail of rich, vibrant color. Each stroke felt like a dance, creating elegant lines and curves that brought your words to life. It was a sensory experience unlike any other, one that made even the most mundane writing tasks feel like a joyous celebration of creativity. Fountain pens came in a dazzling array of colors and styles, from sleek modern designs to vintage classics. Students took pride in selecting the perfect fountain pen to match their personality, turning these writing instruments into cherished possessions. As technology marched forward, fountain pens gradually faded from the classroom landscape. The convenience of ballpoint pens and later digital devices relegated these once beloved tools to the realm of nostalgia. Card catalog. Card catalogs first became commonplace in the US by the 1870s. At first, those cards were written by hand. Good handwriting became one of the basic requirements for being a librarian. The chief advantage of the card catalog over the book catalog is that new acquisitions can easily be filed without making any older part of the catalog obsolete. That, in turn, made it easy to include added entries. The main entry in a card catalog had all of the bibliographic information about a book. It was usually filed according to the author's name. The added entry had such additional information as the title, additional authors, alternate titles, subject headings, and anything else that seemed necessary. When librarians wrote cards by hand, the added entries included the bare minimum of information that could lead interested users to the main entry. Printed cards made it easier to list the required added entries at the bottom of the card and distribute sets of identical cards, one for the main entry and others for the added entries. In 1967, as an effort to automate their library cataloging operations, Library of Congress employee Henriette Avram creates the machine-readable card format code, or MARC, which makes it possible to move cataloging from paper cards to computers. Reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Back in the 70s, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders were the audio stars of American classrooms. These bulky machines resembled something straight out of a sci-fi movie. 
with their spinning reels and clunky controls. But despite their intimidating appearance, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders played a vital role in education. The teacher, armed with a microphone and a reel of magnetic tape, recorded a lesson or lecture for future playback. As the tape spun, capturing every word with precision, students listened attentively, taking notes and absorbing the knowledge being imparted. Reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders weren't just used for lectures. They also facilitated language lessons, music rehearsals, and even student presentations. With the push of a button, teachers could record audio snippets to complement their lessons, providing valuable auditory reinforcement for visual learners. But as with many relics of the past, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders eventually faded from classrooms, replaced by more compact and user-friendly technologies. Digital audio recorders and multimedia platforms revolutionized the way we capture and share information, relegating reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders to the annals of history. Yet for those who experienced the magic of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders in their school days, they remain fond reminders of a time when audio technology was as awe-inspiring as it was functional. Slide rule. The slide rules were the mathematical marvels that ruled American classrooms. These ingenious devices looked like rulers, but were packed with secret mathematical powers. They helped students solve complex equations without the need for calculators. It was a long, slender ruler with a sliding middle section. This middle part could move back and forth, allowing students to line up numbers and symbols to perform calculations. With a slide rule in hand, students could add, subtract, multiply, and divide with ease. Using a slide rule was like mastering a secret code. You had to learn how to align the numbers just right and interpret the markings to get the correct answer. It required patience and practice, but once you got the hang of it, you felt like a mathematical wizard. Slide rules weren't just tools for crunching numbers, they were symbols of mathematical prowess. Students proudly carried them in their backpacks, ready to tackle any math problem that came their way. And while calculators eventually replaced slide rules in classrooms, these humble instruments remain a nostalgic reminder of a time when math was a hands-on adventure. Trapper Keeper. Trapper Keeper is a brand of loose leaf binder created by Mead. Popular with students in the United States and parts of Latin America from the 70s to the 90s, it featured sliding plastic rings, folders, and pockets to keep schoolwork and papers, and a wraparound flap with a Velcro closure. Trapper Keepers usually had a theme, such as a cartoon, television show, or video game. Between 1988 and 1995, Designer Series. Trapper Keepers featured abstract designs and, later, computer-generated images. Inside a Trapper Keeper, you could stash your notebooks, folders, pens, pencils, and even snacks for those long days at school. Each section had its own designated space, making it easy to find what you needed without digging through a messy backpack. But the Trapper Keeper was more than just a practical accessory. It was a fashion statement. With designs ranging from bold patterns to beloved cartoon characters, students could express their personality and style with their choice of Trapper Keeper. These iconic binders became a symbol of organization and preparedness, beloved by students and coveted by parents. And while modern backpacks and digital organizers have since taken their place, the Trapper Keeper remains a cherished relic of a simpler time in American schools, a reminder of the joy of staying organized in style. And there you have it, folks, 10 forgotten school items that will surely evoke memories of a simpler time. As we bid farewell to these relics of the past, let's cherish the lessons they taught us and embrace the ever-changing landscape of education. Until next time, keep on learning and keep on exploring. Peace out.